Be careful with those who say I've had a mind of my own. Nobody can. I, I just know they are not born again. They are not. They don't have the Holy Ghost in them. They probably once encounter Christ, and I'm going to show you tonight why they decide not to have the mind of Christ. Please follow me tonight. Are you there? He says, "Speak the same thing. Let there be no division among you." He said, "But that you might what be perfectly what joined together in what." In the same mind and in what? The same judgment. He said, For it is what? It's been declared concerning you, my brethren, by the God's family, that there is contention among you. And each of you say, I am Paul of Paul, one some from Apollos, one some from Cephas, one some of Christ. Amen. He said, Is Christ divided? Notice he didn't say Jesus. He kept saying, Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none except Crippus and Gaius. And then, lest anyone should, should say that I baptized them in my own name. Yes, I also baptized the house of Stephanus. Beside, I do not know whether I baptized any other. Gone. You see, for Christ did not what? Send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel and not. Now follow this. Because this is where my message, the cross of my message is tonight. Not with the wisdom of words. Now I'm going to tell you different kind of wisdom. Wisdom of words. He said, lest the, the, the cross of Christ should be what? Should be made of no effect. Why did he say, not say the cross of Jesus? Because while Christ was on the cross, you were there with him. So understand these things when I'm saying it. You were on the cross with Christ when he was being crucified. I pray that so many of us begin to understand scripture. There are certain things you will not. Nobody with circumstances and situation won't push you to do them. I've told you, do anything, but don't do anything to harm the body. When you do what harms the body, boy, you are biting more than you can chew. Are you here with me? Okay, let the cross be made of no effect. He said, for the message of the cross is what? Foolishness to those that are what? Perishing. But to them that are saved, it is the power of God. He said, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where, are, where is the disputer of this age? Had not God made foolish the wisdom of this world he said for since in the wisdom of God the world through wisdom do not know, did not know God it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe the Jews request for sign and the Greeks seek for wisdom he said but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews, a stumbling block. And to the Greek, foolishness. But to those who are called, both the Jews and the Greek, it is the power of God and the wisdom of God. But the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of man, of men. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. So tonight, I want to talk on the foolishness of God. The foolishness of God. Hello. Please follow me. What I'll be emphasizing on tonight is the foolishness of God. It, to man, we call it other names. But that's how foolish God is. I want to show you how foolish God is. And at the end of the day, you tell me whether the foolishness of God is actually wiser than man. Why is God, why did Paul say that the message we preach is foolishness to them? Why? Why? What kind of message was Paul preaching that was foolishness to them? That the people see as God's foolishness. What kind of message was Paul preaching? And what does it have to do with us today? What kind of preaching was preaching? 
Look at chapter 2. From verse 1. And brethren, when I came to you, I did not come with what? The excellency of what? Speech or wisdom declaring, or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, what? Except Jesus Christ and him crucified. That was the message of Christ for Paul. Paul came to preach to them how Jesus, God gave his son and his son was crucified. And the people call it foolishness. But you see, to us that are wise, it's actually not foolishness. Am I communicating here? Why? Because John chapter 3 verse 16 told us that for God so loved the world that he did what? He gave his only begotten son. Listen, why was the son given? Why the, the, was the son killed? Why did the son die on the cross of Calvary? Every of this action was motivated by one thing, God's love. So God's love is the foolishness of God. God's love. That's the foolishness of God. He was so... Let, let, me, let me ask you a question. How many of you, you lost your son? Because Adam was the son of God. That God has actually created to be on earth. Please follow me. Follow me. Adam was the son of God that God created to govern the earth. To join him in ruling the earth. Adam was God's representative. Adam was the royal lineage of God that was on earth, representing God on earth. Now, God lost that one to the earth and the elements of the world and Satan. The only one he had left, he still sent him to go die for those ones. God, but he wasn't propelled by anything. He was propelled by love to send his only begotten son. So I want to talk on the matter of love tonight as the foolishness of God. I want to talk on the matter of love tonight as the foolishness of God because listen, I discovered that this matter of love has not only been misunderstood in the church, it is gradually fading it's getting weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker by the day as the church moves on, as the church march towards rapture, as the church march towards our exit from this earth. I discovered that the matter of love is going down, 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 down. I know you might not understand what I'm saying because you were not a Christian or you, were, you didn't belong to a Christian family in the 80s. I did. I did. I remember the year it clocked, 1980. But you see our generation. You see our generation. No. But I'm going to show you why. Go to Matthew chapter 24. Let's start from verse 1. Are you following me tonight? Yeah, today is Valentine's Day. You talk about Valentine, but you don't. How many of you have read about Valentine to actually know what he died for? How many of you? I mean, listen, if, if, if that man didn't die for what God believed in, he would have been faded away. But around the whole world today, some people will say we don't, even churches who say we don't believe in it are started celebrating him. Why? Because he died for what God sent his son to die for. So then, Jesus went out and departed from the temple. Jesus departed from the temple. And his disciples came and showed him the building of the temple and said unto him, and, he said unto, and Jesus said unto them, Do you see these things? Assuredly I say unto you, not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. And now, he sat on the Mount of Olive. And his disciples came privately to him and said, Tell us, when shall this thing be? And what shall be the sign of your coming? And what shall be this, the end of the age? Tell us how this word. What, we want to know the sign of not just your coming. We want to know the sign of the end. We want to know the sign. When these things are telling us, what shall it be? What shall be the sign of the end of the world? So Jesus said to them, verse 4, This is the sign of the end of the world. Take heed that no one deceive you. 
that's the end of the sign of the world. The, the, sign, the, the sign of the end of the world and Christ coming is deception. But it's going to come in multidimensional ways. It's going to come in different ways. In different ways. And Jesus is going to show you the signs. The different ways rather that they are going to come. He said, many will come in my name. He didn't say they will come in their name and say his. They will come and say he's Jesus. He was Jesus. Many will come in his name. Are you following saying, sir? Are you here with me? They will still be preaching the same, the same Jesus, Jesus that. that died, that was crucified. That's why you see that we have many prophets today. Many pastors. Many preachers. Are you following say? Both called by God and both called by ambition, both called by themselves and both called by hunger. But there are those that belly call. The Bible says, Whose God is their what? Belly. Yes, now belly call them. The belly do, they say it's ringing. The calling is ringing. Are you following, sir? Did you get it? Okay. So he said, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many will come in my name and say, I am Christ. They didn't say, he didn't say they will say they are Christ. They will tell you that Jesus was Christ or his Christ. They will preach Jesus. Paul said, Some are preaching it out of contention. Some are preaching it to hurt him. He said, But whether you preach it out of contention and out of love, he said, Jesus is being preached. That's where the stage we have gotten to. So if you preach it, whether you hate Pastor Chinedu, you do it because you want to compete with Pastor Chinedu. It doesn't make any sense to me. Let Jesus is being preached. And this, he said, the reason why they are preaching me is that and we what? Deceive many. So they will be preaching Jesus that you will know what they are doing in the secret. You will be preaching, they will be preaching Jesus, but you don't know their motive. He said, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Are you hearing those ones? Uh -huh. you, you get it now. Uh -huh. Jesus is telling you that all these things will happen in the end time. So he said, he said, and you will see, I say, he says, when this thing begins to happen, he says, see that you are not troubled. He said, but all these things must come to pass. He said, but the end is not yet come. He said, a nation will rise against nation and kingdoms against kingdom. I say, and there will be what? Famines. Not the way it is in Nigeria now. So, there will be famine, there will be pestilence, there will be earthquake, there will be in various places. Go on. Say, all these are the beginning. Beginning. We are just in kindergarten of sorrows. <laughs> he said, then, he said, then, there will be what? He said, you will be delivered up to tribulation. And they will what? They will kill you. He's telling us. He's telling us. For those of us whose mind is not ready that one day, when I see all of you running, you want to make all the money. You want to do this. You want to do that. That's why I tell you guys, listen. You see those things you're pursuing. They have no value. Amen? <laughs> Are you still here? He said they will kill you. And then you'll be hated by all nations for my name's sake. He said, and then many will be what? Many will be what? Please follow now because I'm getting to where I'm going. Many will be what? Offended. And they will start betraying what? It does, it's not talking to outside that's not it's talking to the church. Inside the church. Many will be offended and they betray one another. And then what goes on? Come to the next verse. And then false prophets will what? Because of this, notice that the first time he wasn't calling them false prophets. He was just saying that these ones will preach my name just to deceive many people. Because they'll be preaching based on the fact that they need money, they want, they want to eat, they want name, they want fame, they want this. They are not doing it because they are doing ministry. Are you following? Saying now, when this door open, first prefort will come in, and they will deceive many. Notice the how many times he has used the word deceive. It's all about deception. They will deceive many, and then there will be what he said. And because lawlessness shall abound what will happen the law of many will grow cold but he who endures the word the same shall be what and this gospel of the kingdom must be preached around the world to witness to every day then the end 
will come. All the, the rumors of war and every other that has happened. The only thing now is this last word. The, the river Euphrates that the Bible says we dry up has dried up. Every other thing has happened. The only thing remaining now is that the gospel has not been preached to all nations for a witness. As soon as that is accomplished, the end comes. But this is my concern tonight. The love of many, go back to verse 13. The love of many we was cold. The love of many for God, the love for God, the love for the church, the love, love among family members, love among siblings, it will was cold. It will come cold. Remember that the beginning of this journey began with love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only, the sustenance of our relationship with God is our love for God. If the love of God is missing in your heart, in your life, in our midst, child of God, our gathering is just in vain. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? If the love, do you know what the Bible said in, in Matthew, if you read Matthew 22 from verse 37 down, the death of Jesus, which is the greatest commandment, he said, the greatest commandment is this. Thou shalt do what? Love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. He said, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. He said, on these two hang what? All the laws and the prophet. He said, everything you read in the Bible is hang on these, these two principles. Loving God and loving yourself. In other words, it's one, just one principle. That's why Jesus said, one and a new commandment I give unto you. A new. That's why when Jesus, that he didn't give us plenty of commandments. He gave us one. Love yourselves. He said, by this shall men know that ye are my disciples. But you know, you know, you know what's happening. You know why on Wednesday service, people will be to when you go to some people's house, now what are they doing? Nothing. The weather is hot. That same hot weather, they are finding themselves. Some of them are in darkness now. Self. They don't have money to buy for it. They don't have... They said because they are angry. If God loves us, why, this, why is this world like this? What is it, self? For all the suffering we are suffering. Why did God... How, why had God not done anything? Listen to me, sir. God had done everything he would need to do for you, for you. Everything the Bible said, if Jesus, if He gave you Jesus, why you were yet sinner? He said, How much more will He through Him give you all things? I want to talk about I want to talk about the the the, the subject of love. Many of us, our love for God has not just dwindled, is at the zero level, is crying now for help. Is crying now for help. If they drop the things of God and drop money and drop worldly things for you, you will prefer them to the things of God. As far as you're concerned, you see, we have come to the age where pastors regret the call of God upon their life. Where a, a brother is no longer happy. I don't even know why I got myself involved in this thing. The love of God is gone. So when we now say we are having VG, it doesn't move you anymore. You see it as what is it again, self? Ah. When we now say we are doing convention, let's come to war. Ah. Kill, ah. Ah. I want you to remember when you fell in love with that guy. You will discover that everything he likes, you like it. You can do anything to make him happy. You can do anything to make her happy. Where is your love for God? Are you still out there to do everything to make God happy? Are you still out there to do everything to make Jesus happy? Will you still be able to inconvenience yourself to make sure that Christ smiles?
gone are the days when our heart, our heart, our heart condemn us when we don't do certain things in the house of God. Today no longer matters to us. You know why? Because the love of God in our has was so old that it doesn't make any meaning to us anymore. There are many believers now. You know why they are not in midweek service? They have a date. Believe me, sir. There are, there are many people that are not in, this, in service today. We are not the only one who had midweek service on Wednesday. But there are many believers who won't be in church today because today is Valentine's Day and they have a date and that date is more important than them being in the presence of God. And majority of them are ox. Why? The love of many of them had was called. In, 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 in Revelation chapter 2, God began to talk to the church of Ephesus. He said, I have, you, you are good in so many things, but I have something against you. He said, you have left your first love. I remember there, there, was, a time, there was a way you loved me when you newly believed. When you newly got born again, when you newly got baptized in the Holy Ghost, there was a way you loved me. He said, that love, the way you loved me then, he said, it's missing now, it's gone. He said, go back to it. He said, yes, I will come to you and you won't like it when I come. Because I gave my all without reservation. When you see yourself begin to serve God with reservation, when you see yourself begin to serve God with reservation, where they now tell you, serve God with sense, serve God with sense, <laughs> that's the wisdom of men and then the foolishness of God when they tell you serve God with sense not only you did that church listen to me sir I've seen many in my few years of pastoring I've seen many that they told serve God with sense that have died today people can sell them people can sell them to serve God with sense and they are dead today they serve God with sense and died died miserably and we that are serving God without sense, we are still alive and kicking. When you see yourself begin to serve God with sense, serving God with reservation, the wisdom of this world have set in. Your own wisdom have set in. You are now looking at those who serve God the way they serve God as foolish people. They don't get sense. You know, they don't get sense. They don't get sense. But you see, God loving us the way he loves us. The Bible says, why we were yet sinners. Loving us the way he loves us looks like as if he's a fool. That's what it looks like. That he's a fool. How can he be investing in those who are sinners? But we are expected, listen, to reciprocate these things. Love for God is wasking cold. The Bible says, because lawlessness shall increase, it shall abound. Lawlessness, it shall abound. There's nothing you're going to do about it. So whether you want to believe it, listen to me. You can't do anything about it. Lawlessness will keep increasing. Guide your love for God. 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 That's the greatest commandment. Guide your love. Jealously guide your love for God. Make sure that nobody talks out of it. No situation, no circumstances talk you out of your love for God. You know why you still walk the way you walk and you are not moved? Your love for God has wasked God. There is no love for God. You are just going so that we won't say you have backslided. Anytime you see yourself beginning to do what you like, you, you want to do it your way. Backsliding has started because the Bible said in the book of Proverbs that a backslider is always right in his own eyes. When you tell him, sir, what you are doing is wrong, he gets offended. He gets angry because as far as he's concerned, what he's doing is right. won't permit me to start talking about love for your brethren. You see, when I see many of us say, when I say, oh, I love you, Lord, you say you love, which, listen to me, sir. 
telling me you love me without loving my family is a lie. Yo. There is no amount of love you say you love me now. You don't love my, my wife. You don't love my kids. And you say you love me. You are, you are fooling yourself because you are not deceiving me. I know better than that. How do you say you love Jesus and you don't love me? How do you say you love Jesus? You are angry with a brother. How do you say you love Jesus? You are angry with a sister. How? By telling a man, I, you know, brother, I love you so much, but I hate this life. Because the person you hate is the bride of Christ. Do you not know that? I'm not yet talking about the fact that that person is part of your own body too. The person you hate, you are telling the husband, Lord, you know I love you, but you hate the wife. And he's telling you that me and my wife are one. And then you are saying, Lord, I love you, but I hate your wife. And he's telling you, look, it doesn't work that way. Are you still here with me? The love matter. The love. Many of us need to go back to God in prayer and say, rekindle my love. You see my love life. I'm not talking about. You see, that's why many you see many Christians now walk into infatuation and think it's love. They walk into wrong relationships and walk into walk into anything. And Jesus will be walking, watching, and they will say, uh, somebody told me, say, Lord, he said, Bro, Pastor, with all that I serve God, why would God give me this type of husband? I say, you, you, you divorced Jesus many years ago. Listen to me. Let me say this to you. Just look at me. Look at me. God will not give his son who is in relationship with him to a stupid girl. There are some of us you stop hearing the word of God many years ago. You just come to church, but you don't hear the word of God. So you are praying, Lord, give me a husband. Give me a good husband like our pastor. He won't give you. He won't give you because you are not a good wife. You are not called. Are you full of sir? You have fallen out of love with Jesus many years ago because a brother offended you. A sister spoke to you the way you didn't like. So you are falling out of love with Jesus many years ago. You didn't even know it. You were still coming to church. Go and check it. Any brother or sister you see that come to church, he avoid. I don't want to step on anybody's toe. Nobody should step on my toe. Go on. He's not born again. He has left church many years ago. He's still just coming to that building named Mercy Seat. It doesn't sound like Valentine's message. But I'm telling you Valentine's message. We must, we must come to a stage where our love life is revamped. Our love life is revamped, rejuvenated again. is bouncing like it used to bounce before. Where a brother offends you, you are the one running because you don't want to lose him. You are the one running to say, brother, okay, I'm sorry. Is that thing that is making you angry? I'm sorry. Don't be angry. Even though he's the one offending you. When last did you tell somebody, I'm sorry? For the sake of the bond and the unity of faith. When like, you say to a brother or sister, I'm sorry because you are my brother, you are my sister and I don't want to lose you. No, you won't say it. You know why? Because you have joined the lawless. You've joined the lawless. You've joined the lawless. And unfortunately, you don't know you've joined the lawless. Gone are the days when we are waiting for Wednesday. After Sunday like this, we are waiting for Wednesday. Because it's a service day. Not because it's anybody's birthday or not because it's Valentine's Day. But because it's a service day. You are praying for Wednesday to come. And then you are praying for Friday to come, prayer meeting day. You are praying for Friday to come. Because it's the time when we have fellowship one with another. No, we can't, we can't do that anymore. We can't do that anymore. We don't pray for that anymore. Because our love has wask cold. Listen, the reason for the great falling away, the Bible said before Christ will come, there will be a great falling away. Many believers will fall back, we fall away in faith, from faith. The reason for that is the love. Because our propeller towards the pursuit of God is the love we have for God and His people. It's the love we have for God and His people. Let me tell you, when 
you can spend anything for church and it doesn't pay you you don't feel bad about it you can even if you, are, you don't have savings you can spend anything for God that's one of the proof that your, your, your love life is still life you see many believers know John chapter 3 verse 16 but they don't know 1 John chapter 3 verse 16 how many of you can quote First John chapter 3 verse 16 by height here? Yeah. Because many believers don't know it. Put it on First John 3 16. By this we know love. Because he what? That what will happen? How do we know love? We knew love because he laid down his life for us. So that we also if you say you have learned love from him you also do what lay down your life for the brethren you see that your ego that are no greed greed for the sake of the brethren for the sake of that brotherhood that's what i was trying to tell you when i was preaching on holy communion for the sake of that brotherhood that oneness lay down your you see your ego, your pride, your intelligence laid down. But you see, the love of God has caused me to lay down my life for the sake of others. Who have you laid your life down for? Look at you now. You are no longer vibrant in the spirit. You are no longer fervent in the things of the spirit of God. Why? Because a brother talked to you the other day they were sharing food you wanted to take and he said wait and you got angry i met somebody the father told me he said we won't come to church again that we don't feast he got something for somebody the person that picked his name came by for him i say really i say really so you will get to heaven and say the reason why you left your duty post is because of probably one boxer one shirt that they would have bought for you. It's not enough to celebrate Valentine. What's your love life like? Do you really love people? Do you really love people? The love of God constrains us to love his children, to love his people, to love what he loves. The only business God has earth is the church. You can't say you love God and hate church. You can't say you love God and hate a brother. You can't say you love God and you are resentful. There are people you don't talk to. You can't say you love God and the work of God is a burden to you. Many of you here will go and borrow money for your boyfriend. Borrow money for the sake of your girlfriend. True or true? I know I'm always saying the truth. It's truth. Are you from sir? Some of you can travel. You don't know how to swim. Or you can enter boat to go and visit your boyfriend. You don't care whether that boat capsizes and, and drown. You don't know how to swim. Or, but you will travel to go and visit him. But you know what? The work of God has become a burden for you. It has become a burden for you. That's how far we can go. For this thing we call love but our love for god and our love for his church is dwindling every day what about your love for humanity how much do you love humanity they say to me if you love humanity you will tell them about christ when you love humanity you will see everybody you see on the road every day who had not known christ you will weep every day for god because you know that that person is going for eternal damnation you see, this thing we are talking about, if he has end, not one billion years later, he will come out. But this eternal domination we are coming, we are talking about has no end. Yet you see them every day and pass by. And then when we say, come for evangelism, you are very busy. Come, let's go for evangelism, you are very busy. Let's pray on Wednesday, and, I mean on Tuesday and on Thursday for, and on Saturday for souls, you are very busy. And when we say the business of so many of you, it's movie you are watching. It's football you're watching. It's one thing or the other that is just frivolities that is taking you away from it. 
So as you're celebrating love today, understand that this man called Valentine believed in something, lived for it, and died for it. Jesus believed in you, lived because of you, and died for your sake. What are you living for? And what are you getting ready to die for?